Welcome to the Rebel Road Show. How many tulips is too many tulips? We're talking with people making money off the beaten path. Let's kick it over to Madeline, who's got some drinks for us. Tequila gin. Yeah. Oh, and I'm getting paid for this too? Dope. <laughs> Every shoot's almost fire fest, right? We're a picture of a sandwich away from just being canceled. Every shoot. Cheers. So Andy Fergola, you are coming in all the way from Hawaii to New Jersey. Yes. You are an ocean conservationist. You are a free diver that likes to swim with sharks. You got a huge social media following. You're Insta famous, TikTok famous, all that stuff. <laughs> But really, you're a badass person. I'm not going to say badass woman. You're a badass person. Badass human. You're a badass human <laughs> that you. likes to live with sharks. Yes. Uh, and we are so grateful that you're here on the Rebel Road Show. Yes. I'm <laughs> so excited to be here. Now, I know it's weird probably to fly from Hawaii to New Jersey and talk about sharks. But you know that the uh, inspiration behind Jaws has a Jersey tie in it. Right. So Peter Benchley wrote Jaws. And then... Uh, I think he was inspired by this, some like giant, like great white that was caught off of Cape Cod. Right. But in 1916, I don't know if you know the story. 1916, know. there was three attacks that happened in a week in July. It happened at Beach Haven in Long Beach Island, and then up at Spring Lake, and then a, um, and then it happened in Matawan Creek, which is by Raritan Bay. Cool. And a Not Bar cool, but a yeah. Barnum and Bailey Circus lion tamer caught a bull shark. And they opened it up and there was 15 pounds of human remains in it. So, and like, Are there photos of this? There's photos. Oh, yes. wow. That's crazy. So in 1916, it started this like week-long hunt. And I think that's part of the main story. The idea Jaws, behind so. Jaws. You're going to need a bigger boat. Anyway, joining us is Katrin. She's our lovely bartender, terrified of sharks. So I <laughs> thought that it'd be great if you could teach her a little something. Yes. By the end, hopefully you'll be a little bit less scared. Terrified but obsessed and love them and only want good things for them. But... Like it inhabits my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> so listen, a part of this show is we like to have cocktails and talk. So Katrin, what are we drinking today? Today we're having a shark bite. Now, I see it's bloody on the bottom. What's that? What's what's in this? It's what's just in this your thing? splash of grenadine. It's three quarters ounce of dark rum, three quarters ounce of light rum, uh, ounce of blue curacao, three ounces of sour mix. And then again, you got a little shark gummy too. Nice. Oh, right shark in the water. Yeah. And the yes. grenadine splash. It's a shark week special. It so is a little cute. eerie, right? With this blood at the bottom. I like it. Cheers. Thank you for coming Cheers. out. I know yes. it's a long trek, but we're very excited to have you in studio. Oh my God, it's really good. It's pretty good. That blue carousel brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> so not many people seek out getting in the water with sharks, yet you do it repeatedly. Yes. Why? I just love how amazing that interaction with a predator can be. They're so strong and capable of so, you know, obviously we see that on Shark Week, all of these different things, they highlight their power, but how rarely they choose to use that strength. You know, they're really actually um, predators that don't want to have confrontation. So having that different, different view of what they really are like in the water versus what people think they're like, it's just an amazing kind of anomaly and just it's just a beautiful experience now because of movies like jaws and shark week and sharknado and whatever <laughs> weird concoction that they've come up with there is a lot of misperception around sharks so why do you think this is such a problem that needs to be addressed and and why are you risking your life in order to do it yeah i think that sharks i mean i don't think this is a fact that they are very important for the marine ecosystem and they act as that, you know, top level predator. So at the top, they're balancing everything else out. So if you start to remove all of the sharks, then the whole ecosystem actually starts to collapse. It causes a whole cascade. Everything's connected. Food web, food chain, all of that is connected. So when you remove your top predators, you have really bad problems that can actually, there's so many facets to it, but to get to right. the point is that you have degradation of your coral reefs. And for us, even humans, coral reefs are really important for regulating our air quality so they actually absorb a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere which we can get all the help we can get for that at yep, this point in time yes. so they're very important for that for coastal communities coral reefs are very important for shoreline buffering which is really good you know literally like hurricane storms coming onto shore because there's a reef that they hit first it actually helps to protect the land yeah most people don't actually know I about didn't that didn't know that yeah so they're very important for that 
And they're also really important for juvenile fish when they're growing up. And so a lot of fish that people will eat will grow up on the reef. And even just food provision from the ocean is begins in coral reefs. So if they start to degrade and we have less of them, there's a lot of issues that even humans will actually face. And air quality, I would say, is one of the major ones. But yeah. Wow. And so how do you get this idea of like, I'm going to free dive with <laughs> sharks in order to bring awareness and try to save them? Yeah. That's a that's a crazy leap, but it's it's working. <laughs> you're like, where but you're following that? but just based on your following alone, it's working. Yeah, I think that people really it's the same. I mean, Sylvia Earle, like you you protect what you love. Like that's the bottom line of why humans do anything. We do it because we love it. So having that firsthand experience and like being able to get in the water with them, see them firsthand, show people online, that's like what I'm really passionate about now is trying to bring the ocean to people that don't have access to it and either don't have the means monetarily wise or just there's no, you know, it would be so hard for them to get there and being able to feel like maybe they could connect with this animal that all they see on TV and all that they see from their, their screen is really bad negative press on right. them being these man eating monsters. <laughs> seeing the real version of them and seeing that people can actually swim with them and interact with them is is really powerful and it's something that I've seen firsthand actually change people's perceptions on them. Now, now I know you got Cajun sweating because even when we're at the shore, <laughs> when the sun starts to set <laughs> at like six, she's like, it's feeding time. Get out of the water. <laughs> so listen, you this is what you're dealing with. Dinosaur here. soup. A dinosaur soup, right? I told yes. her that once. I was like, you know, this ocean's just dinosaur soup. And she's like, well, great. Now I can't There's go so in. So many at all. big scary things. Yes. Uh, I have so many rules to enter the water. Yeah, especially when I showed her. I don't know if you've ever seen the clip of the two women in San Francisco that are kayaking and a whale just swallows oh, them and spits them, them yeah. out. Well, not actually eats them, but yeah. <laughs> no. He spit them out, but you know, those poor they women were in were, a bad spot. They were in a bad spot. <laughs> they were like right in the middle of the buffet. I love that it turned out that that one woman didn't want to go. She was peer pressured into going on that trick. I'm just oh imagine. Oh my God. That would that, be me. I'd be the one that like, we're going. Like, it's going to happen. We were in its mouth, Barbara. Uh, <laughs> You'll but, remember this forever. Yes. That friendship is bound for life now. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, we, we yeah. are aware of it. We're, I'm waiting for maybe 60 seconds and I'm thinking about it. I know that's right. irrational. It's not so, because I mean, I think. I think I think about that. I feel like I have a shark brain where I'm always like, even when I should be more relaxing, not like looking around all the time, I feel like I always have to be aware because when I'm in the water with sharks, I'm so aware. So even when we're diving from shore and the likelihood of seeing them is a lot lower, I'm just like always aware. So You're I don't think always thinking, looking. I, I can't like turn it off. I'm always trying to be prepared for anything, not in a negative way, but you still, you're like, yeah, anything could show up. I feel like the more you learn about it, there's so many things out here. She likes to go out and make sure there's like a wall of people in front of her. How's that strategy? Is that good strategy? <laughs> well, I think rules. <laughs> I think that that's a, a good thing to think about with strength in numbers, less likely to, you know, sharks less likely to approach when there are more people or just even surfing. A lot of people ask questions about surfing. It's really hard to avoid things when surfing. Those negative interactions are so rare. You can't really predict something's going to happen. You can look at different factors in the area. Be like, okay, there's maybe a higher chance because there's been a lot of rain and there's a lot of scent in the water. But another thing is never, you don't want to surf by yourself because if you're all alone, you have, you know, a shark in the area, they're a lot more likely to feel confident to just check you out, even come closer to you, bump you, anything like that, maybe potentially bite you, thinking that you're a sea turtle or something floating at the surface. But I don't think strength in numbers, I think that's a good plan. You know, it's good to have more people for sure. Just know if Katrin is in front of you toward the shore <laughs> that you are, she's hoping <laughs> that you're going to get bit first. The buffer. <laughs> the other rules are I have to be in front of the lifeguard stand. I have to have a specific watcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She just, you have I'm to watch her in there. Swimmer. Lifeguard's not I'm enough. I'm not a strong swimmer. I'm also concerned about the undertow more than I am or something. That's definitely more likely to get you than a shark. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Now, I like when you break down videos of attacks or things that went wrong on a boat mm -hmm. where you're explaining to people what went wrong. Do you think that most bad occurrences with sharks are because humans are doing some dumb shit? Yeah. Ah! Oh my God. I mean, I feel like we tend to get ourselves into trouble all over the place. Like people literally more 
you're more, more likely to die from a selfie than to be killed by a shark because people more are likely to die from a selfie, like taking a selfie. Like I'm, Oh my God, here's a cliff, like taking a picture and oh, then yeah, they yeah. fall off or like they're taking a picture on a street and a, a car hits them, things like that. So there, it's actually statistically proven that selfies are more fatal than sharks, <laughs> which is really embarrassing for us as a species, but unfortunately is the truth. So it kind of, I feel like, yeah, connects to that thing that human doing dumb shit kind of like gets us into trouble sometimes you know, for sure. Watch out for those selfies. Yeah. They're killers. It used to be coconuts. Now it's selfies. Yeah. yeah coconut. I mean, that's still true. Yeah. Minus one killed. point for the human race. <laughs> right. That used to be the old stat is like, oh, more, you're more likely to coconut fall like on your head. Right. Your head. Selfies. You're Much also more believable right, also and than it's the coconuts. relative to society. And even uh, there's a statistic that says that you're more likely to be bitten by someone in New York than to be bitten by a shark, which is <laughs> that is true though. It is true. It, like literally, I think it's eight times more likely. I'd have to double check the actual statistic on it, but you can look it up the numbers, and it's like yearly. It's okay. It's, yeah, you got to watch out on the subway. <laughs> so you're out in Hawaii. How many times a week are you getting in the water, and where did this start? It kind of depends on the week and the weather and everything, but I would say at least five days I'm in the water and specifically with sharks, minimum of three days a week. And sometimes it's six days, sometimes it's seven days. I'll go on my day off too because I just love you know swimming with them. And then I'll do other dives where I'll actually be going from shore because there's a lot of like really cool caves and things that you can swim through and just like shoreline that has really beautiful coral and just fish. So that's mm. also something that I'll do a lot. And you're a free diver, so that means there's no no scuba. You just have a snorkel and some fins. Yeah. A GoPro and a dream. <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah, I uh, I actually started scuba diving when I was like 12. So I was really, really young in Miami. Really lucky to be able to grow up by the water and just be able to get in the water all the time. And so I started scuba diving when I was 12. And I had always found, not always, I didn't even know free diving really existed until later in my life. But when I figured out that free diving existed, I would see all these beautiful videos online. Mm -hmm. People just swimming with animals without any kind of oxygen tank or anything. And there's something really cool about that freedom to be able to move your body that you can't do with scuba diving. And obviously it limits your air supply. Definitely a little bit of a different experience in yeah. that front. But I definitely love the the ability to move my body. And I think that wildlife kind of likes interacting with you more when you're more quiet you're not this big scary noisy thing with all the bubbles and all your gear and it's just being connected to the ocean literally through holding your breath is something really special to me that's interesting that actually makes a lot of sense <laughs> yes I mean, I've seen some scary videos of yours. And, and you know it's scary too, that GoPro video <laughs> where that uh, it's a big ass tiger shark comes up behind you. The moment you realize something's behind you. It doesn't seem scary, but yes, I know a lot of people are like, that is terrifying. Why would you do that? Well, like, so your strategy is you have to face the shark, make eye contact. Right. And you even have to make some contact. The, the contact, I would say, is very rare that anyone would ever have to do that. But sometimes, yes, you would have to. It seems like in your videos a lot, a lot of them want to like <laughs> check you out. Like they want like a, a curiosity nibble. Yes. I think also that's kind of, that's the stuff that's more interesting too. And that's what I love. I, I mean, I wouldn't say go out and harass wildlife and try to grab onto things. But if they want to approach me, I definitely love that moment. I want to be here for it favorite moment of connection but there's so many things where the shark just swims away and just curves you and just like leaves you hanging and you're like no I was waiting for you to come here and that is a lot of the reality most of the dives there's hours of the shark warming up getting comfortable getting used to you being around there and that's you know you don't people don't post that because it's not really interesting or exciting to watch a shark swim away from somebody they're like oh that's not normal so the exciting stuff is, I think, more of what we post and more of what I like to share are those really like contact moments or very close moments. So there are times where stuff like that is happening where the shark is avoiding you and I don't post that as much. You have to have some sort of reaction though. Like you see a tiger shark as like goosebumps, <laughs> heart rates going up. What What's going on? You can't be so relaxed when you no, see No, I, I wouldn't say relaxed. I just get excited because it's, yeah, they're one of my favorite sharks. I've, they're probably my favorite shark. I try not to say that because there's so many cool ones. Like a and parent, you don't want to pick a favorite. I know, I know. I'm like, mm, 
And everybody loves the tigers because they're so big and they do tend to come in for those interactions where you get to touch them and people, we like to touch things, what people like to do. So it's obviously kind of natural that that would be a shark that people would like, but they're, they're, yeah, they're my favorite shark. And so whenever I see them, I always get super excited. And especially it's something cool too. We get to start to learn the different individuals so I can tell who it is sometimes. And that's like my favorite when I'm like, oh, this is, well, you know, whatever. This is Nikki or this is Roxy or different shark that I've interacted with for like you can five recognize years. Them. Some of them, yeah. Some Do of them have distinct them? patterns. Uh, not all of them. <laughs> Your favorites. We, yeah, we definitely have kind of come up with names and stuff for all the different sharks that we see regularly that we can, yeah, continually identify. And yeah, that's my favorite is seeing the ones that, you know, you recognize for sure. Is there a specific spot in Oahu you always go to? It's not the exact same spot, but there's, um, there's a ledge. And so it kind of runs for miles and there's a few kind of areas off there. Like if you went out with one of the shark companies off the North shore, you would go to one of those locations. So what are the tips for people on how to, what not to do Yeah. when you see a shark? So don't run away and splash around and freak out because that's the worst thing to do. That's the hardest but piece I know, that's us. what people want to do. They're like, oh, absolutely not. I'm getting away. <laughs> Get out of here. But I, I always tell people, fake it till you make it. So even if you're like absolutely terrified and you're like going to shit your pants, you're like, nope, I'm confident. I am strong. I'm a predator. I'm looking at you. You do full Oscar from Shark Tale. You oh, Jesus. Back up. I'm crazy. I'll be tripping. Oh, what the? Ah! Just fake it. Fake it. Okay. Yeah. And then, so make sure you give them eye contact. They're really perceptive to eye contact. There are, I would say, like 80% of the time in the location I dive and for other areas around the world too. That's all you need to do is look at them and then they see that you're paying attention. They're like, okay, not going to do that. We're going to leave the area. I see that you're aware. You're not just this prey item that's not paying attention, like cowering, looking away. And just so like, it knows if you turn and face, it's fully aware. You can see a, a change in demeanor yeah. when you do that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the sharks can be really confident or maybe, you know, I've seen sharks that have been starving to death and that's obviously they're a lot more likely to come closer and risk things because they are really hungry. They're like, are you prey? Are you sure you're not prey? But that eye contact, I would say, is one of the strongest things you can do. And just being like, you can make yourself vertical if you can. Hard to do that vertical. without a weight belt. Um, but if you have a weight belt on, that's great. If you don't have weight and you can't keep yourself vertical, don't worry about it. Just, you know, remain calm. Don't like thrash around to try to make yourself vertical because I feel like that would not <laughs> not right. be, the, that'd be the opposite of what you want. But um, that even showing the front of your body, they know where the back, I have all the time. They'll come up behind me and they, I, I don't see it in a threatening way because it's kind of, I'm not a shark, I'm a human, but it feels like we're having this mutual interaction where they're respecting me. I'm respecting them. So I'll turn around and be looking at something. And then, you know, they kind of come up a little bit closer when you're looking that way. And then I turn around and they're like, never mind. Like totally didn't see you there. <laughs> like pretending. Wow. Yeah. But then there's so many other steps. Like after that, if the shark is continuing to approach you, like other things that you can do to try to have a safer interaction as well. So if you're, you have them, you know, they're coming up to you and you're facing them and they're still coming up to you. Another thing you can do if you have fins on, that's great. You can have that as a barrier instead of reaching out your hand because especially with most sharks that people would see are going to be the smaller species. So they, and by smaller, I mean basically like smaller than a tiger shark and tigers are like eight to 15 feet. So anything. Eight to 15 feet. Pretty okay. large. Yeah. Okay. So I would consider that in the larger category. But if you have a smaller shark, like eight foot or less, you can use your fins. They're great. If you have anything in your hand that is not your hand, like if you have a GoPro pole or if you have, like as some people have like their camera housing or anything like that, that's really great to create space with. Basically, if you can use something that's not your body to make space, better to do that than, you know, reaching out your hand if you can avoid it. I've seen you do that in your but, videos with the fins. Yeah. And then you can just literally most, I would say most of the time, they're just going to either come near it. They can feel you extending your fin or extending an object towards them. Sometimes if I'm also like I have dealing with a shark that is seems a little bit more dominant, I'll swim towards them because the, it kind of gives this like I'm being confident. I'm aware that you're here, but I'm also confident and I'm not scared of you coming up to me. 
And a lot of times they'll be like, okay, never mind. Didn't mean to do that. I'll give you space. Sometimes they don't and they keep approaching. So when, when a shark approaches you and you actually do make contact, which yeah. you do a lot. Yeah. What's the key? <laughs> you don't want to just push away. You want to, you want to keep your hand yeah. on and why? So sometimes in my videos, I'll do different variations. And because of that, I do that because sometimes the shark presents itself in a way that I have to use different hand techniques than what I would tell people to do. Um, so for what I would say to do, and most of the time, you just need to so push down on the head. You don't want to ever hit their nose under or anything because if you're hitting under their nose, it actually causes their mouth to open. Same way, like if you hit your knee and your knee reflex, it's literally like a, a reflex. Like you hit it and it kind of like drops open. It's just so down. So if on this top is the head, of the head of the shark, you want to push down. If you can have your elbow locked, you really want to try to lock your elbow. So if they're more, you're not just going to like bend in and then they're here if they push back. So locked on top of the head. And follow through, really important. A lot of people will say- You're pushing hard. Uh, it depends. I try not to, unless I, I can kind of see that the shark is like needs it because it seems to be more pushy or more dominant. Because I don't want to, I also don't want to scare it. It's like a weird balance. But if you ran right. into a shark and you've never seen one before, just yeah, scare it, whatever. Just push hard. Push the shit Go out. with what you Smush it. She's you redirecting. Yeah. You want to just use the momentum that you have, use the energy that you have because it's better It's better to be safer in that instance than being like, oh, I didn't want to be like, you know, too intense. And then, you know, the shark is going to give you more than you right. wanted. I had a question. With, yeah. with all these sharks that you know, have you ever encountered, is there like a goat? What's her name? Is it Bertha? Is it like, oh, is there? I think Nikki's the goat. Yeah. Nikki's and the I goat. And I think That's everybody, yeah, yeah. Everybody that works off the North Shore, I think everybody would say she's the goat. Yeah. Everyone in the North Shore of Oahu knows about well, Nikki. Well, not like everybody that shark dives. Yeah. How many of you are there? Mm. So the whole gang. Now there's a lot of, there. it's been growing. So there's a lot more people now. And I would say that's probably like at least, 40, maybe like 40 people that actually work. And then there's all the people online. I'll have people comment on my videos that have seen posts. And there's another shark, uh, Roxy. She has a broken jaw. I actually have her tattooed on my I hand. I saw that um, video. It's heartbreaking video. She is, she's wonderful. We haven't seen her again this year yet. So I'm really hoping she's okay. okay. You know, it's actually unfortunate. There's so many videos of sharks with broken jaws that it's, there's so many different sharks that have broken jaws is that from boats it's usually from fishing i it's usually when they're um either caught on like a long line or something or if a fisherman's battling with them for a really long time it's it's like having something pulling at your face for so long and they they want to escape so they're fighting as hard as they can to get away from it so it can cause like little breaks like some of them have little like cr like a little bit of a, a, a broken jaw and then for example roxy hers is like her whole mouth is half of her face yeah. is open so it's really easy to identify her too because of that. Wow. So I, people on the internet, I was going to say, will literally be like, oh, is that Roxy? Because they've seen her posted and it's, it's pretty, it's cool that people recognize her, but it's really sad that she has to deal with that. And what's Nikki's deal? She's got scars some scrapes. How do you, she, how do you uh, identify? <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of funny. You can actually recognize their face after a while, even when they don't have those really intense characteristics. So like even just seeing her face, it's like, right. I know that's you when you're coming up because of how many times I've seen her and how wonderful she is. So with all these people interacting with these sharks, do you think that they're getting used to humans? Like, like I would definitely say that they're much more used to people on the North shore than they are in other areas. And you know, wherever there's shark tourism, the sharks are used to humans, you know, they're more, does adjusted. that make them more curious? I would, Less curious? Yeah, I, I think it, it's kind of interesting because I think it makes them more comfortable around people. So they're less mm. likely to immediately bolt away the way that a shark that hasn't seen people as much would do. But there's been times where we've, we've interacted with sharks. Like I've gone to Cabo in Mexico and there's blue sharks and mako sharks out there. And they, they likely haven't really interacted with people ever. And or oceanic white tips off of certain locations as well where they don't see people. And sometimes those pelagic sharks that don't see people are more confident because that's just kind of how they have to be to survive, right. you know, just being out in this really rough environment. So I think it kind of goes both ways, but I definitely think I've seen the sharks where we dive off Oahu 
they're just so patient with people. The amount of people that I see that do dumb shit, like either grabbing them or like charging down at them swimming. Charging like, down at them swimming? Like they don't even know what they're doing. They're just like diving down to swim and they're like, oh, okay. Like, let me get as close as I can or grabbing them and stuff like that. Like on tours, I've seen that where guests that don't know how to swim or they're like thrashing at the surface because they've never swam in the ocean before and their first time getting in the water is with sharks because that's the way we do it, I guess. We're just going all the way. No baby steps. Wow. And so I've seen them be so patient with people. So I think that that kind of interaction can make them a little bit more, I don't know, have maybe a little bit more of a mild temperament for that, but they're definitely still very capable and there can be times where they completely turn it on and they're like, nope, I'm an apex predator. Get out. So, wow. yeah. Well, it's energy too, right? Like 100%. you talk about sharks yeah. and you're like, I'm looking to have a connection with you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's so amazing and special that you, every shark is, I'm trying to have a connection with you. Like you guys are trying to connect now and you know, simpletons yeah. until now you change the world would be like, it's an encounter. Yeah. It's an encounter. It's not an interaction. It's an encounter. Let me encounter. tell you something. I'm yeah, yeah. I see a shark. It's an encounter. Okay. I'm not, <laughs> I'm like, not swiping not right. It's an encounter. <laughs> We're terrified of encounters and you're having these wonderful connections yeah. and leading by example and showing like, you know, that it's perception is reality. It's not them. It's how we see them. Yeah, 100 percent. And they they'll read your energy too, like exactly what you're saying. They will. I've been on dives where I can see like I'd have random guests out and they the sharks will be like, no, I don't like you. They can pick what kind of energy and it's, it's what do usually, they do if they don't like you? <laughs> I'm like, well, what energy should I have? All right. Like that guy looks like a pain in the ass. Literally <laughs> though. It's usually like the macho dude that thinks he's hot shit. And so they kind of do this thing where they, I feel like the guy gives off. I'm not going to always say guys, but I would say a lot of the times it is guys. And they have this really <laughs> dominant energy. They think they're like, I'm going to be apex predator. I'm like, okay. I'm going to be the human torpedo. Yeah. And I'm going to zero in on you. And not in a like respectful way, but in a like, I'm just this big, strong, tough dude or person. Person, not all dudes. Come on, you're a monkey in the and water. What are you doing? <laughs> is, is that shark? They, yeah, that's soup. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll just be more confident. Sometimes they'll, we call it checking. Well, they'll kind of charge at you. They yeah. charge I know, at I you. I literally knew as soon as I said that. In you're your really videos, like, they're not, not charging. They is that considered that. charging? No, I mean, I, I mean, guess it's I. Scary. I actually, it's not we just recently, I just it's recently, terrifying post, no, 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 no. sometimes they will. And I try not to post too much of that because I don't want everything to seem scary and, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But there's kind of a fine line of being like, okay, I want you to not be scared of sharks, but I also don't want you to think they're puppies. And that's right. kind of the phenomenon that's kind of going on now where people are like, they're just amazing little sea puppies. And I'm like, definitely not. Like I've been in situations where I, I mean i have so much respect for them because i've i've seen how powerful they can be and i am not a shark so just respecting that but having that energy what we're kind of talking about it being more like calm and just respectful i feel like yeah. they can tell when you're being respectful and i don't know i can't read their mind and ask them am i being respectful do you like this like how is this going for you but I think that uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm respecting you. I'm giving you eye contact. You're giving me eye contact. We're doing this thing. I'm not charging you. I'm not charging into your space. And if they want to come up and approach, that's great. And if they don't, then they can kind of have their space. I'm not going to chase them down or anything. And I think that energy when you're trying to chase them, they can either run away and then you obviously you lose the interaction and that sucks because you want to have, you know, you want to see the shark. Most people who come out shark diving want to see the shark. That's, you know, that's shitty. And then either that or they charge back and then they show you that they can be really dominant and you know, they could potentially bump into you, things like that, How which we don't want. How fast that charge? I, it depends on the shark. What's the fastest charge you've seen? <laughs> I, like, I don't know if I have my little speedometer out to measure it, um, but the, it, it can they can come up really fast. We've had dives with i've seen tigers go really fast i've seen tigers like launch part of their body out of the water which is not normal they don't really breach like that um with makos we i went to um i went to cabo recently in march and the first mako we had it was uh, the whole time it was going I, I don't even know miles per hour but it was like speeding everywhere like the fastest i've seen a shark move constantly anytime it wanted to get somewhere there was no like middle ground it was like speed 
speed. And it was probably like a sixth of the speed that they can actually go or maybe even less than that because they can, they're the fastest shark in the world. Whoa. Yeah. So they can, they can definitely turn it on when they want to. So when they're slow and curious and just checking it out, that's when you can get upright, face, do yeah. all those things. Yeah. yeah I but mean, at the end of the day, if they yeah. wanted to, there's nothing you can do. I would say uh, if you... If it's that, hungry and it's decided, hey, I <laughs> ate a guy named Bob two weeks ago and it wasn't And it bad. was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would say that there's still, even if a shark, I've never been bit and that's like something I would like to continue. Uh, we, but, we, as, we as well. <laughs> we all want this. And... Um, but if you were getting bit, like if a shark was biting you, there's a lot of people that say like, oh, punch it in the nose, punch it in the head. Like, it's great. But the nose thing is actually really bad advice because like I I'd actually mentioned this um, on the previous interview on the Today Show and that when you punch, it's like underwater slow. When you're moving slow motion, it just doesn't, you know, you have no speed there. But also poke it in the eyes what yeah, am i supposed to do I, well gills. honestly like eyes gills? and gills or i would say i would go for the gills. like three stooges just like, yeah and just poke the shit out of their eyes they have a really strong protective membrane that covers their eyes so i would even the gills probably better gills okay and that's how they're breathing tickle. just tickle yeah, the just, gills. just give them a little okay. underarm yeah okay <laughs> some pressure and then yeah if you hug i know hugging sounds like the last thing you're trying to hug. do just, in that you're moment biting. Let's, just, let's hug it out <laughs> just make it go <laughs> I, again, like I've never been in that situation, so I can't speak from firsthand experience. But if you look like you're fighting back, I think there's definitely a lower chance that they're going to continue doing what they're doing because then they feel vulnerable, you know, and they don't want to feel vulnerable. They want an easy meal. They eat things that are dying and injured. And they're like, this thing is not injured. It is coming back at me. There's a higher chance that they're going to leave. Interesting. Kajun, how do you think you'd do if you squared up with a shark? I mean, that's... Uh... I don't think I would – the squaring up part, it feels so good. Like, I feel like education is important because the more that you keep seeing it, the less it feels like insane to do. And I yeah. understand that you have to do that. But when you look at your videos <laughs> and then you see it coming far away, it's really hard to say, <laughs> I'm going to hold up here. Like, it's just really hard to envision it. Well, I think if you but just goals. get if you just get it like go on a dive somewhere where you have professionals, don't that's like one thing I say all the time is people want to just get in the water with having no idea. And I don't they're not monsters, but they definitely you should know their behavior before you just jump in and try to go to a shark dive. But I think if you got in the water with them, you would see you'd you'd feel totally different, different. after. You just one experience. I've seen it firsthand so many times where people are terrified and then they're actually a lot of times the hardest ones to get to come out after the last five hours. Imagine if the goal hours. is to not have it go away. That's a crazy, that, that to me is wild. <laughs> we want to see so not many sharks norm. and we don't want them to leave. <laughs> we want to make sure they're having a great time. It's I know. totally, it's her perception. She's there. Of course they love her. She's like, you know. So I go, it's Andy. We know her. We follow her on TikTok. <laughs> they know your name. You're the goat out there. Wow. Um, do we have more? Yeah, I said I wasn't going to drink one, and now here I am. I'm going to have like three because you've got me sweating now. They're delish. So how many sharks is too many sharks? Like how many are in the water where you're like, we should get out of the water? Because I've seen that's when things yeah. get dicey, right? Now there's two or three. Well, no. I mean, what's I've, the most you've been with? Like over 100. And <laughs> you're like, excuse, excuse me? me? Yeah. Excuse you, 100 yeah. sharks? Yeah, it just depends on their behavior. Andy. Yeah, I'm not kidding. With guests, with people I don't know that shit have about no sharks, idea. but 100 sharks is too many. <laughs> You're like, I'm not here for that. They, <laughs> not here. No, it's it's actually, it's kind of cool when they're That's all- Coachella. I, I, it's like <laughs> shark like, I Coachella. I did not pay for this. <laughs> but even like having that with um, guests in the water, like when I used to guide guests and yeah, just random people have never seen a shark before. I'm like, well, there's 100. 100. Well, welcome to the best day of your life. Like they're all here. Best day of your life. <laughs> A hundred. Wow. But if, you know, you can have one shark and it can be really, really aggro. We call it aggro, like aggressive, mm -hmm. intense. Um, I don't like using the word aggressive a lot because people tend to immediately think that's like vindictive and on purpose to be like bullying and aggressive in that way. But it's it's just things that people say sharks do when they're being aggressive is things they do to survive. So they're just trying to see if you're prey, things like that. They don't want to just hurt things like marine mammals. Like we were mentioning earlier, they hurt things for fun. Sharks don't do that. They hurt things to survive because they want 
to eat. They want a meal. Like, what are you talking about? Orcas here? Now that's what we're talking we're about? Be, we could literally, orcas are definitely a great example of hurting things for fun, but... They like to play with their food? Yeah, they, they'll kill things just to teach. I mean, I guess that's survival too, but they'll, um, yeah, they just toy with them. It's crazy. I mean, I watch, I forget, we were watching some Nat Geo thing with our, with our son, because he's, he's two and he, used, he was obsessed with whales, but we were watching this pod just play with this seal, <laughs> and I was like, this is like messed it's up gnarly, here. It's gnarly, yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. So that's marine mammals. Marine but you're mammals. saying sharks are just sharks they're, kill they're stuff different. to be, you know, in the survival mode to eat. They're not sharks. It's a waste of energy. They don't want to waste energy on something that's not going to help them survive. So, uh, what I was getting at when I said that was that you could have one shark that's being aggro and really intense, and you should get out. Or you could have a hundred sharks that are all being really mellow and they're fine. So it could. It doesn't really. I wouldn't say it matters on the number. It matters on the behavior of the animal more. If you're in the water for the first time ever with a shark and you see a hundred sharks, I would be like, yeah, maybe get out just because <laughs> you should probably not I'd be probably in that situation. Two, just, <laughs> two like would be too much too for me. Yeah, one's too many. But if I'm going out there, I'm expecting one. If there's more than one. Right. Okay. Yeah. I would say most of the time we have more than one. It's rare that it's just So one. what are the watch outs there where there's multiple? Because obviously now you got blind spots. You can't square up with yeah. all of them. So if they're, if they're coming up, Really, really key thing. A lot of people will ask this online too. They'll say, well, if there's more than one, how do I make eye contact with both of them at the same right. time? And so you don't need to be like staring the whole time. You can just like, look, look this way, look that way, make eye contact with everybody. Everybody. I say everybody because I consider them like people, but not yeah, people. They're in the room. They're here. <laughs> so They're in the room, so they, they count. Make eye contact with all of the sharks. And doing that um, shows them that you're paying attention and they're doing the same thing. You know, when they're looking around at other sharks that are in the area, other things going on, they're not looking at one shark the whole time being like, I'm dominant. I'm staring at you. They're looking around. They're doing the same thing. So right. you doing that is kind of mimicking their behavior and their attention and the way that you can also reflect that attention and that they you can even tell if you're looking around more. They'll, it's really crazy. Do you suggest that? Is that bad? It's like, look at this one's looking all around. It's freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this one's, this guy's weirding me out. We got to get out of here. He's stressed out. <laughs> that, I mean, sometimes they will be like that. You can get like, sometimes we'll get like a really, like a smaller one and they're really nervous around everybody, all the other sharks. So if I bring like a Woody Allen neuroticism to it, they're is like, that the move? Is, <laughs> they're like, this one is scary. It's just tweaking over here. <laughs> I would just say the calm, calm awareness is definitely what calm and aware. I feel like are two of the main things you should remember. If you ever see a shark, be calm and be aware of what's going on around you. Okay. Even if you feel like you're not aware and you're not calm, just pretend even, even that little bit of like fake confidence will still help you. And a lot of times your husband is in the water with you <laughs> and you're surrounded by <laughs> two, three, four, five tiger sharks. Right. How yeah, does that dynamic good. play? Yeah. I, you got to go home with this guy. He's, I, he's behind you. I got to make sure he doesn't get, get eaten. No. Yeah. He, um, he just doesn't work in the water with them as much as I do. And I mean, I do, you know, it's every day, hours and hours and hours every day. So obviously that comes with time and just the experience. So whenever I have him in the water, it's, it's very much like me just, I, I like to let him do his thing, but I'm also like there just to buffer in case I need to. And uh, it's actually kind of funny sometimes because the sharks are so smart, they'll pick up and they'll be like, why are you keeping this human away from me? And they'll be a little bit more interested. Mm. I actually have an old video of, um, it was uh, his first tiger shark. And she kept like coming, as soon as I would like turn around just to check, because I was like blocking her off from him. She was like kind of doing this like nice little gentle circle. And anytime I would like turn to like just check behind me to make sure there's nothing else coming. She would just be like, okay, it's my opportunity. And like She's try to come to up a little bit more. Yeah, literally. That was actually the song I put on it. <laughs> I could take your man if I want to. I could take your man if I want to. I could take your man if I want to. Won't feel lucky for you. I don't want to. Won't to. I can take your man if I want to. Literally. That's actually, I can pull it up. It's a really that's old video. <laughs> wow. Now, I saw the drone video plus the underwater footage that you say Paul's ass. Paul's here in the building. <laughs> You say Paul's he did ass not because die. He, was, he wasn't paying attention because he, he was working. I mean, he was trying to take, yeah, get a testament videos. to himself. Yes. He was trying to get that shot. Yes. True cinematographer style. He thinks the camera is going to protect him. It's right. What they all do. <laughs> we and watched then, that clip as a married couple working together. We watched that clip like 
nine times on the way to the Drake concert last night. I was like, Peter, she saves his life. Look, watch, watch. Look at her <laughs> hop over him and get this. T- like he 100% yeah. would have. 100% would have gotten them. Now, would she have <laughs> saved me? I don't know. But you did. I um, I it, That particular day was also in the morning was really challenging because we had a very strong current. So if you stopped swimming for a second, you immediately get like sucked into it. So you could actually see in the video when I like leap over him, it you see how fast I move. And part of that is because I'm like swimming fast. But a lot, another part of it is because the current is so strong that it's like pulling me over there. So that was really challenging. The dive just – it's harder to redirect and do things where like if I have to push a shark off or like stand your ground. It's hard to stand your ground when you're getting like pushed into the shark by the current. Right. So that was oh a whole God. other factor to everything. And so I know it's like <laughs> – like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I didn't even think about the pushed into the current. It's not the best uh, scenario, but it was fine. Like we only had – I think we had three. But there were, only, there were only two that were really like coming up nice and close. Only so, two. Only two. It Only was a two. light day. Sometimes there's like eight. So oh like it was not so bad. But uh, with that being said, the current was kind of already, you can even see in the video, he's starting to get pushed into the direction of the other shark. And I'm dealing with the one in the foreground. Because, right. You had just pushed one away. Right. And it, when you see the underwater, I actually didn't remember from the drum video if I was still making contact with her or not when I'm still swimming alongside. But then in the video that he got, I was able to see that it's, I'm actually still making contact to kind of like deter her away from him. And then I like look back up and I see this other shark coming up and him drifting because of the current. It's kind of like this double edge like thing going on. I was like, ah, so I like ran over there really fast. She was still pretty far away, but I, yeah. Well, it didn't look that way in the GoPro (laughs) footage. It looked like she was pretty damn close. It was like 15 feet, 10 feet. I don't know. So Paul, are you you grateful for that interaction? Very, very very (laughs) grateful. After that, he asked me, he's like, should I get out? And I'm like, no, it's fine. Just like pay, like look around because I know like you're focusing it's like, on Hey, babe, your- pay attention. <laughs> What's going on? Like you got to look at the shot and that's like super important. But that's, that's like a, obviously when it comes to sharks, it's hard because anyone that takes video and I, you know, I have my own camera. Like I like to take video and a lot of my videos are shaky and out of focus because I'm turning to like just make sure because I can't like let myself go and just like focus on the shot because of the fact that there could be, you know, something happening behind me that I need to pay attention to. Paul's shots yes. are pretty smooth and silky. Yes. Though. You also uh, say yeah. in your video that it was a blind spot and that that was yeah. like an example of just like their intelligence and the fact right. that it wasn't like he did anything wrong. Right. It was that he turned his back. There was an opportunity. And the, and the shark was like, yeah. oh. That's what she just yeah. told him after the fight. I mean, I just- <laughs> <laughs> Babe, it was the shark. It wasn't you. <laughs> Babe, it was it's a blind spot, babe. <laughs> you know Nikki. You know how she is. <laughs> but it's funny, you can even see like in the video from the drone perspective. I don't even like make contact with her or anything. I just like approach her and look at her and then she, she turns knows. away. So it's literally like even if he had turned around in that moment, there's a high chance that she would have already turned off before I got there because she would have seen that he was looking behind. Ha- has so there been times where sharks come to like investigate and you just like stick a lens in its mouth? And- I, I try not to do that because I like my camera huh? and I don't want it to get eaten. Or, oh, what uh, happened? Yeah, that's another thing. What happens to them when you have to use your underwater housing to like I, deter uh, the shark? With the housing specifically, like I really don't do it with tigers because they could like really easily like it could fit in the mouth and I don't I, I don't want to buy another camera. So I really avoid doing that. Um, and I'll use my hands, but for like when I was in Mexico, we had mako sharks and that was the first thing. The first day, the guy that we were diving with the first day said, don't give them your dome. Like, so the front of like the lens where the lens would be protected because they just bite it. And then your dome is fucked because it's all scratched from the shark biting on it. So you just give them the side and my housing's pretty big. So I'm, I have a lot of surface area. So whenever with the smaller sharks, I, I do not give it to tigers. I've seen, I haven't been there when this has happened, but I know people who have had, well, I mean, the camera cameras is cracked worth, open. You know, what's your arm? You like, you, you value your arm I, or the, um, the Sony like, A7S. Like I, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm a Canon girl. Oh, you're a Canon girl. Well, quiet. We're trying to get a Sony sponsorship. No, but that's my next question. Why are you paying for cameras? I know. I know. Why are you, you should not be paying for cameras. Maybe, you have 2 maybe, million followers. Maybe one day, one day that would be nice. And you film cool shit. I feel like I'm That's still so easy. new. Yeah. I know people with camera deals that shoot way less important shit than what you're <laughs> shooting. Okay. Maybe one day. You can let them know. I'll, take, get, we'll I'll, I'll take a Sony too. We'll yeah. erase the Canon. 
Sony. <laughs> we have both. We have both said. So this is we'll put him for ransom. Um, obviously, like there's there's money to be gained in the attention that you're getting from this. But like, what are the ways to make money for this community of free? Di I see it. There's you're not just the only one. There's yeah. there's others. Some of them you seems like you work with. Yeah, it seems yeah. like there's all sort of a a community there. But like say that this is something that you're curious and you want to be a free diver that swims with sharks and captures it or maybe goes on tours. What are, what are the ways to make money and have a life doing this? Cause this is very much living right. on your own terms. Like right. yeah. you're, you're living, what, this is what people work for to then go and have like an hour experience, <laughs> your experience multiple times a yeah. week. So yeah. how does this lifestyle work? It's, it's definitely, I feel like for most people in the industry, you kind of do multiple things to make money. I won't say the money in diving is very good. Like you're not going to be a millionaire being a dive instructor or a dive master or anything like that. Uh, if you can work in tourism, that's a great way. So you can be in the water and still make money. But again, the income from that is typically not going to be great. It depends kind of how often, how many tours you can run. How many and Hawaii is expensive. And Hawaii is, I mean, a bag of chips is like $9. It's crazy. Crazy. Is it really? Yeah. At like the local market right by where I live. Yeah. It's like eight to $10 for a bag of. So it's expensive. Um, rent and all that I'm sure yeah. is. Yeah. And even space, all of that. Like there's so many things that, you know, the cost of living there is really high. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff, I think it's definitely, you have to know it's your passion because you're not going to be making, you know, you're not going to be a millionaire doing this kind of stuff. I think social media is definitely a path you can take to make a better income and there is potential to grow. I'm still, I feel, I still feel like I'm in the early stages of doing stuff like that, even though I've been doing it for a while now. I've kind of been, I, I guess I've been doing social media for even when I was like in grad school doing my own stuff, trying to like share educational posts, like with photos and well, things. Well, yours bring value though. So that's another thing we talk about all the time in this podcast. It's not just like, I, I followed you just from not even the the value aspect of it, but for the escapism, right? Because you're living a life that most people would want to right. at least fantasize living. But you bring a lot of knowledge and, and value to it. Like I've definitely devo uh, devoted a lot of time to, it's really like mostly video now, right? Like even photos and stuff, it's harder to monetize that kind of stuff on platforms. But I think brands are probably the best. That's how I make the most money in a shorter time frame. So with posting and doing all of that stuff, you have kind of whatever the you know algorithm decides you are right. worth or however, I don't know how they break that down or how they decide the pay and it fluctuates a lot. But working with brands that are interested in doing stuff that has like ocean related content or even like an environmental, you know, some kind of thing they're doing to be more sustainable, stuff like that I really love working with. But yeah, random brands like Venus. Um, I had Adidas. Um, Adidas. We did, Adidas had a, um, they do shoes made with Parlay where they take uh, plastics and they integrate plastics into their shoes. So they're promoting that called uh, Run for the Oceans, their whole campaign. So like it can be really big brands like that where you can end up working with and they, they have some kind of environmental angle or ocean angle or something that they want to work with you on. Killer. Yeah. Your audience is your distribution channel and then you can make things and right. do what you want with it. So it seems like you're on your way for sure. Uh, Working it. Now I heard a crazy stat that a hundred, 100 million sharks die a year, yep. which is, I didn't even believe it. I had to Google it so much. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause that's a crazy number. I think, what do they say? 11,000 an hour yeah. worldwide. Yeah. It's crazy. It's. And it's like unfathomable to even imagine that there's that many, right? You're now, like, how's it, that possible? We all know about shark fin soup being a delicacy, but that can't be all shark fin soup related. No. There's gotta be so. So shark fin soup is huge, like what you're mentioning. So yeah. just for anyone that doesn't know what that is, shark fin soup is a delicacy originally found in Asia. Um, it's kind of a status symbol, really expensive meal. And it's, you know, they'll cut the fins off the sharks, take the fin rays out of the shark fins and um, incorporate that into the soup. And it was that status symbol. And it's kind of grown popularity all over the world since really? originally being in Asia. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, side note to that, it's really bad to eat shark because they have a lot of mercury and lead that actually accumulate in their body because they're at the top of the food chain. Are so they using it as a should, garnish? I mean, it's, it's like, it's like literally like the inside of the fin, it's kind of like these fibers. So they're called fin rays. It's the fibers in their fin and they add it to make like an like a noodly texture to the dish. They actually flavor it with chicken or beef broth or whatever kind of broth you want because it doesn't have really any flavor. 
Okay. But and I but I like originally the thought was, oh, I'm so strong. I killed a shark. You know, the status of being able to kill the predator back when it was hard to kill sharks. Now that it's so easy to fish them, and it's so easily accessible for long lines, all these commercial fisheries to just set out a ton of gear and then they can catch you know you know thousands in a day versus the way it used to be so shark fin soup that's what shark fin soup is but for other things that are happening one of the other major things is if anyone you know if you eat seafood bycatch so that's really huge bycatch is basically when the fishery you know they're targeting for example say tuna but then they catch so many different things. They can catch sharks. They can catch dolphins. In giant nets, you're saying. It's that. nets or hooks too. Like even the the long lines will be basically a line miles and miles long with thousands of hooks on it, you know, baited. And that could be even a seabird thousands diving of down. Hooks? It's crazy. I don't even know that shit. It can take like hours and hours for them to bring all the gear back in after they set it. So whatever is left on the lines in the nets or it's like fishing on, with dynamite. Is yeah, and they kill is. so many things. And unfortunately, you know, even though it's caught and they don't want it, a lot of times they'll just throw it back and don't, they don't even use it. And it's not even like, I mean, shark fin soup and shark meat is pretty bad, but I'm like, at least you're using some of it. This is just killed accidentally and just wasted. So that's a Damn. really big contributor. So if you eat seafood, you really have to be really conscious about the seafood you consume because most labels lie or they're wrong. And it's very hard to track seafood because there's not like, you know, police on the ocean. There technically are, but it's not the way that you're driving on the street. There's like cops set up on stations. There's not boats just like waiting out in the Bering Sea to capture people doing illegal things. Yeah. And, you know, people don't even realize it's happening because it's like out there, like underwater. No one has any idea. And so when you get seafood, either getting it from, you know, a small scale fisherman, like in Hawaii, we're really lucky to have fishermen. Like I know the fishermen that go out. I don't personally eat seafood, but if they go out, they catch it. They're like having one line. They're catching what they catch on their line. Or if you spearfish, that's great because you're actually, you're literally killing what you want to eat because you're right. shooting it. So there's no accidental catch or anything like that. But if you don't know where it could come from or you're not sure it's much better to avoid it or even minimize your seafood consumption because of the fact that so many places basically lie or they just have misinformation. They don't even know they're lying. And even shark can be mislabeled. So sometimes on menus, you'll see things like flake, rock salmon, bottom rockfish, dogfish. Those are actually all sharks. And there's there's so many other names like Cazone. There's, it's like, I don't know, at least 15 terms that people can use. Mm. That is actually a shark but people don't people don't even know you know whitefish they're like i'll have the whitefish but it's yeah it's so weird to me wait so if i see whitefish that means it's I'm a i mean it's not a hundred percent but it's most likely shark yeah wow yeah okay it's crazy that is crazy and obviously there's so many other issues going on with the ocean whether it's right. you know plastics microplastics all of that mm -hmm. so how are you trying what what message do you want to get out and what do you think would be the biggest way to to kind of bring back our reefs and save you know it's species in the ocean it's really hard we're kind of at a tipping we're like technically past a tipping point on like certain things are just gonna are kind of irreversible for certain species and certain ecosystems but we you know we still have the power to do things and at least minimize our impact or bring back certain you know certain life and I mean, if everybody stopped eating seafood, I personally think that would be great. But I know that's not realistic for most people. They want to eat seafood. And I mean, even for other types of seafood, that's there's so many fish that are overfished and fish stocks just getting depleted. And people think that the ocean is this vast resource that is never going to end, like run out. And right. unfortunately, that's not the case. So seafood, because again, like, there's there's so many facets to it, like the long lining, the gill nets. These are all different ways that people capture the seafood. Dynamite fishing, like you mentioned. Um, have you ever heard of trawling? Not trolling. No. So trolling is like the way that when they, you know, they drag the lures behind the boat and like the fish, like um, I almost said Ono, like Wahoo, uh, they will, you know, chase the lures and bite them. That's, you know, the individual fishermen doing that. But trawling is horrible and so it'll be done for um, certain fish species things like shrimp as well too and they'll actually drag the net along the bottom of the ocean with weights so it basically just like 
rips up the whole seafloor to capture however, whatever the percentage is of the fish or the shrimp that they're trying to catch. It's like if you took a bulldozer and ran it through a forest to catch squirrels, like, and then you just wreck the whole ecosystem. So that's like another one. That, that seems people, like it should be illegal. Right. You'd think, right? It's just not. Yeah. It's, it's, it's called trawling. trawling. So it's T-R-A-W-L-I-N-G. Because trolling is different. T-R-O. That happens on the internet. Yeah, just on my posts all the time. <laughs> What's your posts? That's in the comments. Gotcha. Wait a second. Let's use her power. Weren't you just verified? Everybody stop fucking trolling. She Get was, that message just out there. Let's go. She's legit. Thank She's you. Legit. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. So that's something I didn't even know to be pissed about. But that's right. Be pissed about it. Trawling. So that's one thing. That's huge seafood, like even minimizing single use plastics and for consumers, like we can vote with our dollar, minimize what we buy, but it's really the larger companies like even producing it in the first place and right. not coming up with more sustainable alternatives. That's the problem. Like the the whole the responsibility shouldn't lay on the people that are trying to buy products and trying to survive and you know right. buy it's literally like your only option for a lot of things. Back in the day, you used to have the onus of the bottles was on the companies. Like yeah. you used to have to return it. Mm. like way back in the day and it wasn't even plastic it was like even, like even glass, glass and bottles. stuff wow yes. and then one single use plastic started coming in so that was like a way for them to skirt no, I... having to have the responsibility that's so the waste of their product that was like, like worse with the plastic right and then also like uh 90 percent of recyclables don't aren't i don't even make it don't yeah. even make it there is hope yeah, there's this company braven that literally like they they essentially get it down to its molecular formula and then like gas trucks will pull up and just like get all of that wow. back. That's crazy. So there's money to be made right. from that, but it's like, it's not there yet. It's That's not mass crazy. produced yet. It probably should be. They probably need some. I wonder what the, the like, um, the energy put into doing that, like what the trade off is for that kind of stuff. Right. What? Yeah. That's a, a whole nother thing. for smarter people. I know. I'm me. like, I have no idea, but that would be cool. Do you see sometimes you go under the shark yeah. now, as, as someone that's getting their air from a snorkel, What's the, are you ever worried when you have to go under the shark? Yeah. I mean, it's usually not too long. So I'm like, it's fine. It's not like a super long amount of time and it's not far from the surface typically. So it's not a big problem for me. I definitely work on like my breath hold training and stuff when at work or even just at home. Sometimes I'll like lay in my bed and just do breath holds. If anyone wants to get better at holding their breath, you can literally... Like I would suggest laying down. So if you did actually pass out, like you'll you'll come back. Like you just wake up again after. But you're laying Do down. You're not going to collapse. You'll make it back. We'll make it back. <laughs> you'll make it back. Don't be underwater alone doing that. It's definitely dangerous. Um, oh, so how long? How long can you go? Um, I haven't done it. Like measured it in a while. But the the longest that I've held. He's like trying to give me a number. <laughs> I. <laughs> Ball, give the me longest, ballpark. No, the I longest hold you to I've, I've held my breath underwater, or not underwater, on la- like laying in my bed or like just doing a static. So statics when you're not moving or swimming or anything. Uh, I was four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. But that's like no movement, you know, just you like. You guys compete? Sometimes. I don't like to do that because it's stress. Like for me, breath hold is supposed to be like out. relaxing. Yeah, we're just like dead next to each other. <laughs> like, oh, wow, how romantic. <laughs> what do you want to do tonight after dinner? Pass out. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, with like sometimes he gets really competitive, and I'm like, I don't even want to be like, I don't want to be like fighting for a breath hold. I want to be like relaxing into it, you know. I don't know. I feel like it's Paul knows of- his number. What's your number, Paul? <laughs> Five minutes, sixteen seconds. I'm there totally you- the Paul. I would take like a beautiful thing we could share together and yeah, ruin it. And, a and, half, five, and be like, I know I'm gardening, <laughs> but like, whose flowers better? Like, <laughs> We're not, it's just for us and for our safety of us as a family, but like. But I'm better. I'm better. <laughs> Four and a I'm half better. minutes is a long time. Yeah. It's not as long as 516. It's not but, as long. But it's not but official. But at least I, don't I know see... how to turn around if a shark's behind me. That's true. That's <laughs> true. All right. So you haven't come face to face with a great white yet, but are there certain sharks that give you pause? Like, if you, is it bull shark scary? Like, is there something where you're like, ooh. I wouldn't say the species. I would say just the individual. So it's it could be a shark that I work with all the time, like Galapagos sharks. I work with them all the time. And if there is one that's giving me weird vibes, I'm like, okay, you're just giving me weird vibes versus 
And what gives you weird vibes? Species. Just the curiosity. Yeah, I, I've sometimes just the way they approach when they come in and they're, or if I can see them get like the other, they're annoying other sharks and the other How sharks. How do they annoy other sharks? Like if they're like charging into them or like getting in their space, like sometimes, you know, sharks don't really, they, uh, you know, different than what you think. They don't just bite everything, but sometimes they do bite each other. So when they, when they do that, like you'll see, especially when I see a male that has a lot of bite marks because female sharks will have scars and bite marks from mating. So it's a whole other thing. But the, uh, when they mate, the male sharks will bite onto the females. So a lot of times they'll have a lot of scarring onto their backs. But if you see a male shark with a lot of scarring, not that from means mating, he's an asshole? usually because other sharks are like he's pissed at him asshole. all the time. And that means he's a prick. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like a thing to look out for. Um, for that or if I can just see that the disposition of the animal they seem really pushy like they're continuously like checking me or like biting onto my camera or something like that where I'm like okay you're definitely you have a lot of energy and you're feeling really intense right now totally I think depends more on the individual than the species how close has it gotten <laughs> Andy um it's uh you know, it just depends on their behavior and <laughs> depends on the she individual. She doesn't want to tell them. She's like, snitches get stitches. Uh, is, they're not going to watch the pod. No, I can no, no. They, they have iPhones. What do you mean? Oh, they do. <laughs> Apple podcast. <laughs> so they, uh, it, I think like one of the closer scenarios like I've had were certain tiger shark really, really, um, being like aggressive in the sense that she was just like snapping at everything, like everyone around. She was just, I don't know what was causing her to feel that way. It could be an interaction she had with another shark before she even showed up to where we were. I don't know. Um, really snapping and like doing these <clears throat> vertical approaches where she likes to come up vertically and then just like snap. So it's really So how do you deal with to, that? It's the thing where I black out and I just put my hands in the right places, I guess. Oh God. You've had something <laughs> approach you from the bottom and snap. Yes. Don't forget just, that this part. <laughs> she didn't say like lightly open. She's underplaying. It. That means <laughs> it's gotten close. Yeah. I mean, and it's, I, you know, I see that and then I'm like, okay, you're, you know, I handle the situation and then I'm going to get out of the water and give her the space that she wants, not trying to compete with her by any means. So that's a really big thing like that. I mean, those moments with one particular shark, she's very intense and, even What's just like name? in hunting, um, we call her Kalihi. She's, Kalihi. Uh, she's got a name. Yeah, it means the edge in Hawaiian. So Sounds she's spicy. She's spicy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, um, she, yeah. She just kind of has that energy all the time. <laughs> so whenever I see her, I'm like, okay. And you just leave. It depends. If she's like, it depends on how she's acting. I'll try because I, I really I like her. Met, but can you leave when you see Kalihi? <laughs> please, please don't. Die. Please don't. She's see like Kalihi. one of my actual favorite sharks because. Like she, um, she reminds me of like why I like sharks, like how they're so capable and how amazing they are in that way. And I, I love that feeling of, I don't know, there, there is like obviously an adrenaline component that comes into like when you have those moments. So I would say those close calls with her. And then if I've been, the sometimes I've been in like bait ball situations where they're, they're bait like, ball? so there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of like little fish Jeez. schooling. It's a sport yeah. I'm not and aware then, of. <laughs> bait ball. Not the, uh, not the sport to play. So there's like a bunch of little fish and then the sharks will be hunting all the little fish and like other like, you know, tuna and stuff will be coming through. So there's like a lot of activity and something when that happens, the, uh, the little fish actually like to seek refuge in your body. So they're trying to hide around you. Awesome. And I'm like, I no, I gotta go. Like you can hide somewhere else. Sorry, dude. Eight ball. I can only help you so much. Yeah. So that would, I would say that's probably one of my closest calls is when and they're hunting, you know, I'm like in the middle of where they're hunting and the bait ball can go from there being nothing to being, you know, thousands of fish, like all at once, all tightly balled together. So it kind of builds really quickly. So sometimes it's like super calm. And then all of a sudden there's all these fish that are like tightly packed together. And then when they do that, you can kind of tell, okay, they feel like they're being hunted. So it's probably going to escalate. In a bait ball situation, how many sharks are around? What are we talking about here? It depends. Um, Is this where those hundred come into play? I would say the most that I've had in a bait ball, maybe like 40. 40? I think that's scarier than like one tiger shark by the, a lot. The bait ball like is they're definitely just, They're like aggressive. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. everywhere. They're diving. Yeah. That's well, they're like just going trying, on the cob and it's, you're the eat. cob. Yeah, so. you just got to get out of the middle of the, the cob, <laughs> out of the ball. 
Whoa. Do or don't wear colored toenail polish. So the... (laughs) 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 Do. No, I'm just kidding. Um, For like... If you're ever getting in the water with sharks, like I wouldn't get in without fins because if you have your feet, it's not even your toes. It's like the bright, brighter color of the sole of your foot that can be, you know, they actually see in contrast. So when they see those like lighter white colors or whites or yellows, things like that, a lot more eye catching to them because they do, you know, they can see that better. They don't see color. They see contrast. So they see that like white reflecting with the darker blue background of the water. How do you versus- feel about like stripes, polka dots, and gingham? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is my. She's gonna start <laughs> showing. What about the her camo? bathing suit line? <laughs> what about this one? <laughs> the uh, the I would just say colors. Like more about the colors. Like if you had a bathing suit that's like red with like black polka dots or black with red polka dots, things like that. Like those colors don't reflect a lot in the water. They don't show up a lot in the water. But if you had a, you know, white, white bikini and with yellow spots or something, that's, you know, more eye-catching because it is those brighter colors. So I would say mostly like colors more than patterns, I would think. Colors more than patterns, she thinks. Wait, girl gang, is that like an ocean thing? Do you like female and male sharks are like so different? Oh, yeah. Do we have a preference? Yeah. Do we like better? Are you automatically siding with the female sharks here? Or this is open for debate. They're better. I'm going to let them They're be better? better? Are they really? <laughs> Say that louder for the rest the of everybody. The females are here better. <laughs> the, uh, the female sharks, it's funny because uh, I used to work on where the ledge that I work on now. One side I used to be where more males aggregate and now I'm on a side where there's more females that aggregate and their behavior is so different. The females, even with tigers, like, I mean, again, I, I haven't applied this to every shark species I've interacted with cause I haven't been able to see every sex of every species, but for what I have seen, the, uh, the females tend to be more like more dominant. They actually tend to be more dominant cause they're larger um, than the males typically because you the mating they're like kind of rough when they mate and the, the females will actually have thicker skin too because of the biting from the mating so because they're larger and more dominant they tend to have this like strong presence but they're more i don't know if it's more confident more like secure what it is they're less erratic so the males will be more erratic more likely to like charge you be a little bit more spastic and kind of like unpredictable it checks out yeah i'm like Kind of makes sense compared to observations I've okay. had across species, but yeah. yeah. Interesting. Now, I recommend not reading the comments, but I'm sure it's hard not to. Yeah. What's the What's the main kind of hate that you get from the, uh, the <laughs> um, comments out there? Is it Is it because you're interacting with them? There's a lot of comments about like the whole like, don't touch them. And I'm like, it's running into me. I don't know what you want me to do when it's running into me. People say, like, don't touch, like, you shouldn't touch wildlife, things like that. And it's, um, I really try not to unless it's for safety. I love it when it happens. Like, obviously, I, like, when the shark, I love the contact. Like, when it happens, I'm not going to lie about that. But I'm not going to chase it down to pet it. Right. So, like, that's different to me. And people that don't dive with sharks don't understand. Like, a lot of, like, I'll get scuba divers that comment on my stuff. Like, I was always taught never to touch the wildlife. And I'm like, well, when it's trying to run you over, you have to touch it. Right. Unfortunately. The, the shark is okay with it at that point because it's running into you. So I'm not like chasing it and harassing it. There's also people that are like, oh, it's just a matter of time. Like until she's done. Like can't wait till they capture this shot of you getting eaten or That's killed. I, I, it's <laughs> gnarly. I'll like literally respond to people. I'm like it's really sad that you like hope people die. Yeah. And they're well, like, the individual. well, no, I don't hope you die. I just want someone to film it. And I'm like, is that better? Like, I don't know, but okay. So... Yeah, comments like that, like people, you know, it's I I'm like kind of dead to it at this point. I kind of like ignore it. It it bothers me more when people in the if people in the community say stuff about it because it's like people that understand more about it. But people have opinions. It doesn't matter like what you do. People are going to hate. And unfortunately, I will see in a, like not trying to make it a sexist thing, but it unfortunately is something that I know that I deal with and other women in the diving community deal with. Men will do the same thing and post the same thing. And the comments are different. They're like, oh, you should, you know, this, the, you mm. stupid, like, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, people don't comment. There's less hate on men's posts. Whether it's 
true or not. Like one, a couple of my friends and I have actually like looked at the comments on different posts to kind of compare. Um, another friend of mine actually did a like mini study where she took like people with similar followings and looked at their comments and like negative, neutral, like positive comments. And I don't remember the percentages, but it's higher for women to have higher negative comments than the so men. The lady that free divers are getting too. more, more bites on the back. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is the way it goes. I guess cross species, Just you know, it's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Well, you're badass. Well, we got the thicker skin, so. And they, those guys didn't get invited to the <laughs> yes. pod, though. You got invited to the pod. Yeah. Top three things on your bucket list. Ugh, like your adventure so bucket hard. list. Yeah, what would what? that be? Oh, my God. There's so what many things. What does the shark diver have on the bucket list? Well, I definitely want to see white sharks, and I would love to do that without a cage, and I don't know where or when that would happen, but if I had to do cage diving, I would really like to go to Guadalupe. I'm hoping that they will you know, reopen it eventually and that people will still be able to do the cage diving out there because I don't, yeah, they're just such an amazing species of shark. And so that would be one of my major ones. Um, I'd love, love to travel somewhere to even like land stuff. Like I find like the land predator, like I really want to go to Africa. I still haven't been because when I go, I know I want to be there for like over a month, like spending as much time as I can doing like land safari type stuff. I'd love to go into the jungle and see like, Anacondas, stuff I don't know like if that. The GoPro is going to protect you from the lion. <laughs> Just no. block off <laughs> anacondas. It's okay, I got my selfie block. stick. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> my camera housing. I'm like, no, not the camera. All right, so you do want to do Apex Predator land stuff? Yeah, I would. This I would love season to two of the television show. <laughs> now it's the uh, the yeah, the lions are next. Yeah, that we, would be really cool. We put cool. this shark girl in the safari. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how she does on land. I don't would not want to redirect a lion. That would be like the scariest yeah. shit ever. <laughs> yes. I think I'd rather be eaten by a shark than a lion for sure. And like sharks don't like hunt in, they're not going to hunt together, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes they'll cooperate a bit, but it's not the way that lions or wolves or something like that would be. So I can't imagine having like six lions trying to kill me and eat me. <laughs> I right. think you're so dope and amazing and I'm obsessed with you. Yes. <laughs> and you, I, we're going to Hawaii. No, yes. no, no. We're not hanging out with her. No, no. you got to do a shark dive. Now that's the second and part. She's taking you to a luau or something. <laughs> I'm so lucky. On land. You, gotta you do a are shark badass. Dive. <laughs> I will say that. And you've taught us a lot. Look, I mean, what you do is incredible. It's, it's for a good purpose. It, 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 like I, I commend you on that. Thank you. It's, wild to me that you do do that but it's important work and you're drawing a lot of eyeballs to it and teaching people a lot of things and i i think it's awesome thank you now nice I'm gonna, to have some support i'm, I'm <laughs> gonna be watching from afar on land yeah. one day you'll get out there one day we'll it's gonna get happen. out there with. it's gonna happen she's gonna get you in the water it's gonna happen All right. we're gonna be like even though you're gonna think you hate it yeah. dog. She's gonna be like, they said not to panic they said not <laughs> to panic marcel we have a real problem here it is not a problem. It is a circle of life. The circle of life is circling our lives right now. Do not move. Do not panic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, well, thank you so much for coming out here. I know it's a long trek. I'm excited to see what you do next. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody follow Adriana Marine on so TikTok. Me on Instagram, on, I don't know, Twitter. Are you tweeting under the ocean? What are you doing? Uh, I guess like I, I'll do like YouTube too. And like, um, that's basically at Facebook, but I don't know how I many think you sell use Facebook. You sell some jewelry as well? Yeah. I don't do it as um, large scale anymore, but I definitely like if people are interested in it, I actually make jewelry out of the fishing line that myself and my friends cut off the sharks. So a lot of times, Sadly, we'll see them with fishing line and sometimes it can be like over 100 feet long of fishing line. So we try to cut what we can and I will make necklaces and bracelets out of the fishing line to kind of, awesome. you know, repurpose it and then also give a name, you know, something for people to talk about when they're wearing the jewelry. So the uh, Instagram for that is going to be Mano Wahine. So it's M-A-N-O dot Wahine, W-A-H-I-N-E, which loosely translates from Hawaiian to... Uh, shark woman or yeah lady shark awesome yeah very pro, cool pro tip peter i want one pro tip <laughs> good anniversary present anniversary present anniversary's coming up i know what to get yes well listen there's a, we get a lot of cool people at this table but i don't know you might be our <laughs> you might be hard to top so thank you so much keep up the amazing good work paul head on a swivel man come on <laughs> word of the day paul look around yeah all right zucks Sense the end of it.